Jean-François Champollion was a French scholar, philologist and orientalist, known primarily as the decipherer of the Egyptian hieroglyphs and a founding figure in the field of Egyptology. A child prodigy in philology, he gave his first public paper on the decipherment of Demotic in 1806, and already as a young man held many posts of honor in scientific circles, and spoke Optic and Arabic fluently. During the early 19th century French culture experienced a period of Egyptomania, brought on by Napoleon's discoveries in Egypt during his campaign there which also brought to light the trilingual Rosetta Stone. Scholars debated the age of the Egyptian civilization and the function and nature of the hieroglyphic script, which language if any it recorded, and the degree to which the signs were phonetic or ideographic. Many thought that the script was only used for sacred and ritual functions, and that as such it was unlikely to be decipherable since it was tied to esoteric and philosophical ideas, and did not record historical information. The significance of Champollion's decipherment was that he showed these assumptions to be wrong, and made it possible to begin to retrieve the many kinds of information recorded by the ancient Egyptians. Champollion, a liberal and progressive-minded man, lived in a period of political turmoil in France which continuously threatened to disrupt his research in various ways. During the Napoleonic Wars he was able to avoid conscription, but his Napoleonic allegiances meant that he was considered suspect by the subsequent royalist regime. His own actions, sometimes brash and reckless, did not help his case. His relations with important political and scientific figures of the time, such as Joseph Fourier and Sylvester de Sacy helped him, although in some periods he lived exiled from the scientific community. In 1820 Champollion embarked in earnest on the project of decipherment of the hieroglyphic script, soon overshadowing the achievements of British polymath Thomas Young who had made the first advances in decipherment before 1819. In 1822 Champollion published his first breakthrough in the decipherment of the Rosetta hieroglyphs showing that the Egyptian writing system was a combination of phonetic and ideographic signs, the first such script discovered. In 1824 he published a PRE acute CIs in which he detailed the decipherment of the hieroglyphic script demonstrating the values of the phonetic and ideographic signs. In 1829 he travelled to Egypt where he was able to read many hieroglyphic texts that had never before been studied, and brought home a large body of new drawings of hieroglyphic inscriptions. Home again he was given a professorship in Egyptology, but only lectured a few times before his health, ruined by the hardships of the Egyptian journey, forced him to give up teaching. He died in Paris in 1832, 41 years old. His grammar of ancient Egyptian was published posthumously. During his life as well as long after his death intense discussions over the merits of his decipherment were carried out among Egyptologists. Some faulted him for not having given sufficient credit to the early discoveries of Young, accusing him of plagiarism, and others long disputed the accuracy of his decipherments. But with subsequent findings and confirmations of his readings by scholars building on his work, gradually led to general acceptance of his work. Although some still argue that he should have acknowledged the contributions of Young, his decipherment is now universally accepted and has been the basis for all further developments in the field. Biography Upbringing and education Jean-Francois Champollion was the last of seven children. He was raised in humble circumstances. His father Jacques Champollion was a book trader from Belgifree near Grenoble who had settled in the small town of Figuique in the department of Lot. His father was a notorious drunk, and his mother seems to have been mostly an absent figure in the life of young Champollion, who was mostly raised by his older brother Jacques Joseph. One biographer even speculated that Champollion was not in fact the son of Jacques Champollion's wife Jean-Francoise Gualieu, but the result of an extramarital affair. It was Jacques Joseph who taught his brother to read, and supported his education. 
His brother also may have been part of the source of Champollion's interest in Egypt, since as a young man he wanted to join Napoleon's Egyptian expedition, and often regretted not being able to go. Often known as the younger brother of better-known Jacques-Joseph, Jean-Francois was often called Champollion Le Jeune. Later when his brother became the more famous of the two, Jacques added the town of his birth as a second surname and hence is often referred to as Champollion for Geek, in contrast to his brother Champollion. Although studious and largely self-educated, Jacques did not have Jean-Francois's genius for language. However, he was talented at earning a living, and supported Jean-Francois for most of his life. In 1802 Champollion began studies at the school of Abbé Dessert, where his gift for languages first became evident. He started out learning Latin and Greek, but quickly progressed to Hebrew and other Semitic languages such as Arabic, Syriac and Chaldean. It was while a student here that he took up interest in ancient Egypt. At age 11 he came to the attention to the prefect of Grenoble, Joseph Fourier who had accompanied Napoleon Bonaparte on the Egyptian expedition which had discovered the Rosetta Stone. An accomplished scholar in addition to a well-known mathematical physicist, Fourier had been entrusted by Napoleon with the publication of the results of the expedition in the monumental series of publications titled Description de l'Egypte. One biographer has stated that Fourier invited the 11-year-old Champollion to his home and showed him his collection of ancient Egyptian artifacts and documents. Champollion was enthralled, and upon seeing the hieroglyphs and hearing that they were unintelligible, he declared that he would be the one to succeed in reading them. Whether or not the report of this visit is true, Fourier did go on to become one of Champollion's most important allies and supporters, and surely had an important role in instilling his interest in ancient Egypt. From 1804 he studied at a lycée in Grenoble, but he hated its strict curriculum which only allowed him to study Oriental languages one day per week, and he begged his brother to move him to a different school. Nonetheless at the lycée he took up the study of Coptic, which would become his main linguistic interest for years to come and prove crucial in his approach to decipherment of the hieroglyphs. He had a chance to practice his Coptic when he met Dom Rafael de Monacusa, a former Coptic Christian monk and Arabic translator to Napoleon, who visited Grenoble in 1805. By 1806 Jean-Jacques was making preparations to bring his younger brother to Paris to study at the university. Before leaving however Champollion presented his essay on the geographical description of Egypt before the conquest of Cambyses before the Academy of Grenoble whose members were so impressed that they admitted him to the Academy. From 1807 to 1809 Champollion studied in Paris under Sylvester de Sacy, the first Frenchman to attempt to read the Rosetta Stone and with Orientalist Louis Mathieu Langler, and with Raphael de Monacusa who was now in Paris. Here he perfected his Arabic and Persian, in addition to the languages that he had already acquired. He divided his time between the College of France, the Special School of Oriental Languages, the National Library where his brother was a librarian and the Commission of Egypt, the institution in charge of publishing the findings of the Egyptian expedition. In 1808 he first began studying the Rosetta Stone, working from a copy made by the Abbé de Tursen. Working independently he was able to confirm some of the readings of the Demotic previously made by Johann David Arcarblade in 1802. In 1810, he returned to Grenoble to take up a seat as Joint Professor of Ancient History at the newly reopened Grenoble University. His salary as an assistant professor at Grenoble was fixed at 750 francs, a quarter of the salary received by full professors. Never well off and struggling to make ends meet, he also suffered since his youth from chronically bad health, including gout and tinnitus. His health first began to deteriorate during his time in Paris, where the dank climate and unsanitary environment did not agree with him. Political trouble during the Napoleonic Wars During the Napoleonic Wars, 
Champollion was a young bachelor and thus liable to compulsory military service, which would have put him in great danger due to the extremely high mortality of soldiers in Napoleon's armies. Through the assistance of his brother and the prefect of Grenoble Joseph Fourier, who was also an Egyptologist, he successfully avoided the draft by arguing that his work on deciphering the Egyptian script was too important to interrupt. First skeptical of the Napoleonic regime, after the fall of Napoleon in 1813 and the institution of the royalist regime under Louis XVIII, Champollion came to consider the Napoleonic state the lesser of two evils. Anonymously he composed and circulated songs ridiculing and criticizing the royal regime, songs that became highly popular among the people of Grenoble. In 1815 Napoleon Bonaparte escaped from his exile on Elba and landed with an army at the Côte d'Azur and marched directly on Grenoble where he was received as a liberator. Here he met with Champollion, whose many requests for exemption from the draft he remembered, and he asked him how his important work was progressing. Champollion replied that he had just finished his Coptic grammar and dictionary. Napoleon requested that he send the manuscripts to Paris for publication. His brother Jacques joined the Napoleonic cause putting both of the brothers in danger at the end of the Hundred Days when Napoleon was finally defeated, Grenoble being the last city to resist the royalist advances. In spite of the risk to themselves, having been put under royalist surveillance, the Champollion brothers nonetheless aided the Napoleonic general Drouet d'Erlone who had been sentenced to death for his participation in the Battle of Waterloo, giving him shelter and helping him escape to Munich. The brothers were condemned to internal exile in Figuic, and Champollion was removed from his university post in Grenoble and the faculty closed. Under the new royalist regime, the Champollion brothers invested much of their time and efforts in establishing Lancaster schools, in an effort to provide the general population with education. This was considered a revolutionary undertaking by the ultra-royalists who did not believe that education should be made accessible for the lower classes. In 1821 Champollion even led an uprising, in which he and a band of Grenoblians stormed the citadel and hoisted the tricolor instead of the Bourbon royalist flag. He was charged with treason and went into hiding, but was eventually pardoned. Family life and later career Champollion married Rosine Blanc in 1818 after four years of engagement. They had one daughter, Zoride Champollion. Rosine was the daughter of a well-to-do family of Grenoblian glovemakers. At first her father did not approve of the match, since Champollion was a mere professor when they first met. But with his increasing reputation, he eventually agreed. Originally Jacques Joseph did not approve of his brother's marriage either, finding Rosine too dull-witted, and he did not attend the wedding. But later he grew fond of his sister-in-law. Although a happy family man, especially adoring his daughter, Champollion was frequently away from his family for months or even years at a time, while traveling to Paris, to Italy and to Egypt. While in Livorno Champollion developed an infatuation with an Italian poet, Angelica Palli. She presented an ode to Champollion's work at a celebration in his honor, and the two exchanged letters for a while, but a relationship never realized. After his groundbreaking discoveries in 1822 he made the acquaintance of the Duc de Blacas, an antiquary who became his patron and managed to gain him the favor of the king who entrusted him with managing the Royal Oriental collections at the Louvre. He travelled to Turin to inspect a collection of Egyptian materials assembled by Bernardino Droverti, which Charles X had purchased, cataloguing it. In Turin and Rome he realised the necessity of seeing Egyptian monuments firsthand began to make plans for an expedition to Egypt collaborating with Tuscan scholars and the Archduke Leopold. Returning from Egypt in 1830, Champollion was made professor of Egyptology at the Collège de France, but he only gave three lectures before his illness forced him to give up teaching. In 1824 he became a correspondent of the Royal Institute of the Netherlands, 